What's going on guys? Zuko back with another War Within video. Hope you're all doing very well. We're going to do a fun comparison video between Stormbringer and Farseer for Ellie Shaman. So buckle up. We're going to jump into a plus 10 City of Threads. I'm going to walk you through all the different packs that I'm doing and the bosses. And we're going to compare the damage from a Farseer build versus a Stormbringer build. Now, if you've been paying attention to the patch notes that came through on uh, for this patch, Farseer got buffed. <clears throat> by quite a bit the ancestors got buffed and then stormbringer got nerfed a little bit and they also nerfed the ascendance damage and then they reverted that nerf so the ascendance stuff is still there it's good to go stormbringer has gone down and farseer has gone up so we're trying to see like are the builds compatible now are they are they kind of similar which hero tree is technically better for mythic plus i mean a lot of these things are gonna are gonna depend on a lot of different factors. Let me start talking about that right now. Number one, my gear on my shaman is not the best for Ellie. Let me just be straight up about that, right? My haste is actually kind of okay. <clears throat> this is without a flask or anything on, by the way, right now. My haste is about what where you kind of want it to be, but my mastery is not because <clears throat> I'm not geared up for Ellie shaman. I'm geared up for my resto shaman for raid. So just keep that in mind. Every single time I do one of these videos, I just want to make sure really clear about that. This is my gear. These are my stats. And it's not really ideal for Ellie <clears throat> for either build. But I'm not going to change my gear in between the different keys. It's going to be the same. Okay. We're going to do a city of threads. Now, the first city of threads that I'm doing, I have an augmentation evoker with me. Okay. So the overall damage in the first dungeon will be higher than the second one where I have no Ogvoker and there just wasn't, I tried to get a, a second Ogvoker, I just couldn't get one, I tried for a while. So we're just gonna do a comparison at the end and we're going to use our brains and subtract you know, the amount that we think we should from whatever an Ogvoker is actually adding to the group, right? Because, <clears throat> excuse me, I don't know the exact number that's being added from the Ogvoker, but I do know, you know, that it's something. We're just going to have to figure that out at the very end. Here's the opening pack as Farseer. We're going to start with the Farseer build, okay? Again, just remember the different variants here. I tried to use my cooldowns at the same time for both builds. The peak damage here in the opening pack was not bad. I think it was around uh, 4.7 million DPS there. We just hit it right there. And the pack's getting melted, which is great. That's the peak damage right there on, on Farseer. And we're going to keep going uh, into the next couple of packs. I'm just going to like fast forward yeah, through the key so you fine. can see each of them. i turn the volume down here a little bit. But there's your peak damage right there. It looks good. It feels good. Not too bad at all. We go through the next couple of packs. We actually tried to invis skip here and somebody died. It doesn't really matter. <clears throat> then we're going to do this pack before the first boss. On the Storm build, which is the next video I'll show you. I end up lust or uh, ascendancing this pack. I don't know why, um, but we had ascendance up. We pulled another pack back there as well. So again, there's variance. There's going to be a little bit of variance every time you do these keys. So just keep that in the back of your head when you're doing your assessment here. There's always going to be some variance in how the keys go. That's just kind of the reality of it. That's an ascendance proc right there. Pretty big damage. The average damage from pack to pack, I would say, on AoE was... 2 million to 4 million for the Farseer build, okay? For the Storm build, it's got like a much higher variance depending on your Tempest procs. That's going to be a theme throughout this video is that the Tempest procs for the Storm build create an enormous amount of variance where like if you don't get it, if you're not getting procs on like Awakening Storms and stuff, then your damage will be much lower. If you do get it, it's much higher. Whereas the Farseer build like I'm doing right now has less variance, more consistent damage but in a smaller window, two to four million versus like one to six million is kind of, you're gambling a little bit more with the Stormbringer build, I would say. Peak damage on the first boss is about 1.4 million. I think I already, I hit it right there. 1.4, 1.38, it was 1.4 for a second, 1.43 million actually. <clears throat> uh, and again, it felt good. I think the Farseer build feels pretty good in my opinion. Um... It's uh, it just got a lot of consistency, as I was talking about a minute. Less variance, more consistency. And the only real issue is that, like, 
For the storm build, getting a deeply rooted proc is very good because if you press Tempest inside of a deeply rooted build, it's guaranteed to overload and that does an enormous amount of extra damage. If you get an Ascendance proc with a Farseer build, it doesn't really matter in, in, in for, for the Ancestors because they don't get an Ascendance proc, right? It doesn't affect the Ancestors and what they're doing. It does, however, give you 20% more haste inside of Ascendance, right? So your Ancestors will be pumping uh, uh, more damage because you're pumping more damage. Like the quicker you're casting spells, the quicker they cast spells. So that's the main benefit for getting a deeply rooted proc or even just a regular ascendance proc is that you have a lot of haste so you're casting things quickly so your ancestors are casting quickly but i would say that the tempest build the stormbringer build gets much more value out of um getting an ascendance proc or the regular ascendance cooldown it just gets more value there's our ending dps there on the first boss pretty good uh we're gonna go one thing i want to talk about is deeply rooted procs really quickly here when the pack, when there's a pack that's at the end of its life, okay? When there's a pack that's dying, and it's at the very end of its life, <clears throat> you need to be very careful that you're not pressing your spenders. And this is essentially a design flaw. This is a bad design choice, in my opinion, from the developers. As this guy is about to die here, I have an opportunity to press Earthshock, okay? If I press Earthshock right now and I get an Ascendance proc off of it, that is completely wasted. It is a completely wasted Ascendance proc. And Ascendance is a much, much more important proc now than it ever was before. It is way, way stronger to get an Ascendance proc now than it was before this change went, went the, you know, before they changed it. I did not press Earthshock back in that pack. And then watch what happens when I press Earthquake in this pack. I immediately get an Ascendance proc. Oh, that's a proc. So if I if I had pre pressed it literally one more spender on that other pack, I would have been screwed. I would have wasted all that damage. So you need to be very, very careful about how you're doing your Ascendance procs. If you mess them up and you do them near the end of a pack's life, and you waste that proc, you're wasting so much damage. I can't stress it enough. So just be very careful about what you're doing, okay? Here's the next boss. <clears throat> We've got uh, peak DPS here ends up being about 1.9 million. I think we're approaching that as we get our Ascendance come, come back here. It's coming back right now. We're going to go Ascendance. We get 1.91 mil there. So 1.94 for a second. We're kind of peaking at 1.9 mil. Okay, so very, very nice. Again, with the Ancestors, you're getting, it's like you're getting, uh, you're always going to get a certain amount of damage out of the Ancestors every single time. And then whatever you can add on top of that, you combine those together, that's your consistent damage that you're getting. Because everything you're doing in your major cooldown doesn't really matter for the Ancestors, right? Sort of separate. Whereas Tempest is all lumped together. Every single thing that you do with the Stormbringer build could be reflected. It could be amplified by getting a Tempest proc. So... It's it's really it's an it's an interesting how different they are. Our our uh, damage at the end of this fight ends up being around one point zero three million. So it goes down quite a bit actually. And on the Stormbringer, when I show you the Stormbringer video, you're gonna see that the the damage that we get at the end of this fight is actually higher, even though our peak isn't higher. So we don't actually peak as hard with the Stormbringer build, but but our over the course of time we keep getting Tempest procs naturally that's just what will happen and my overall damage on this boss fight ends up being higher which is so interesting to me so here's the big aoe pack that's coming up i'll show you what this looks like for the farseer build here we go we have an ascendance proc as well we're gonna use it right meow and i think we're gonna pop it now right here we go boom i got stormkeeper going first then we go so now we're going big we're going really big here four million five million Six million. Six point four million, I believe, is the is the peak there. Okay? So that's pretty crazy. Right? That's with the Farseer ancestors. Six point four million peak there. We do not get that big of a peak on the next for the Stormbringer build. Now I don't think the tank pulls quite as big. Again, variance. Please remember this is all gonna vary. Here's just again pack to pack damage. This is no ascendance. I have no ascendance on this pack, and we're kind of pumping again. So 
it's just really good damage pack to pack I, again i would say for the farseer it's like two to four million two to four and a half million and then you can have those really big peaks like i just had right there okay so that's kind of what the aoe packs look like for farseer we'll get to the next boss the coagulum guy and i'll show you that fight really quickly the third boss i think we end up peaking we end up doing about 1.2 million uh dps here we do have an ascendance proc coming up right now so here's the peak we're gonna peak right here i'm gonna press it <clears throat> there's ascendance we're gonna get over a million here and see what happens here 1.2 million 1.3 1.4 Again, we uh, our, ascent, our our ancestors are down now, so it's just as 1.5 million. The damage is just so high, 1.6 almost, 1.55 million. So the peak was like 1.57 million, I would say, right? That's about that. And then we're gonna end the fight at 1.2 million. Okay, so 1.57 million peak there, and then at 1.2 mil is where we're finishing. 1.18 basically. Let me just write that in the notes here. 1.57 million peak. Okay, that's peak DPS. Okay. Now, let's go to the last boss fight here. And again, the last boss fight is pretty tough and requires a lot of movement. So again, a little bit of variance there. I, I could be performing worse on one build versus the other. Just always keep that in mind, please. This is a general idea that we're getting, right? Here comes my Ascendance proc once the ad spawn. Now, I did the exact same thing on both these boss fights. I did not pop Ascendance until the ads spawn. I tried to maximize my kind of damage here so I can melt the ads. There we go. There's an Ascendance proc. We got Earthquake coming off. Look at all the Lava Burst going out. We peak here at 1.84 million. It's about to come up right now. We're going to peak at 1.84 million here. Maybe we already did. Oh, there it is. 1.8, 1.8 million. Yeah. Then we get some big chain lightnings going. 1.8, 1.9 million, actually. There you go. 1.93 million is where we're peaking. Okay. So, and then the final uh, number for this boss fight ends up being 1.31 million, roughly. We'll get to the very end here. Yada, yada. Izzo dies. We're at 1.32. I almost died to links there. Okay, the final numbers for uh, the overall DPS numbers, once we're done getting percentage here, ends up being 1.65 million. And it ends up looking like this. We got Earthquake, Chain Lightning, Ancestors. The Ancestors did 14.4% of our damage. They're adding additional damage to like 8% like more damage to Earthquake and Earth Shock. So that's hard to like calculate that in but that's also what's happening with the tree um the elemental blasts that we got from the ancestors also are counted in the ancestors damage but the buffs that the ancestors are giving us from elemental blast again it's hard to quantify those buffs right because they're giving us a full-blown le blast buff which is really really good the uptime on the le blast buffs i think are like really high so some stuff is harder to quantify right harder to understand exactly what uh we did and what like when you when you're trying to calculate it all out okay let's go to the next one this is again a completely different composition oh no this was the warrior one that got all screwed up this is a completely different composition we have a prop pally we have two priests so in this dungeon i have no augvoker but i am getting pi from the priest frequently and we're doing the storm build okay exact same talent setup but we're gonna do the storm build okay so very important to just understand that. Also, a couple of things go really wrong here. But here's the opening pack. Um, our uh, peak DPS for the uh, Farseer build was 4.7 million. The peak here was 4.35 million. So we peaked a little bit lower. Even though we had PI, we didn't have an Augvoker. So that's, that's a huge problem. I ended up getting stunned here. But all we're interested in is what the peak damage was. So it was about 400,000 damage less on the storm build versus the farseer build now again is that just augvoker buffing us probably that's probably just the augvoker I, I'm, I'm imagining an augvoker does an augvoker add 400,000 damage per second on an aoe pull maybe i don't know i'm just giving you the numbers right it's hard to quantify this stuff then we do a couple of other aoe pulls not really interested in this we'll get to the boss fight so, oh, we did an ascendance. We did ascendance uh, before the boss fight. So this is the first major difference in these numbers here. Okay, we do a huge ascendance uh, uh, here because he does a massive pull. 
And in my mind, I just thought, well, I have a sentence coming off cooldown. I really should just use it. I want it for the boss fight, but it's like, you might as well just use it. So here we go. We have a sentence and watch our damage here. 3 million, 4 million, 5 million, 6, 7 million. Okay. Big peak of damage here. 7.1 million. I end up getting stunned, unfortunately, because of the orbs. But we did 7.1 million there, which is really, really, really good. We can kind of compare that to the other AoE pack that comes up after the second boss. I'll show you that in a minute. But 7.1 million peak. And then the boss fight ends up being lower, of course. Even though we have Bloodlust, we are going to peak on the boss at 1.16 million. So we, we're peaking right now. We've, we've already hit our peak. Our peak for the Farseer build on the first boss was 1.4 million. So not much bigger, actually. Not that much bigger. 1.16 million here, 1.4 million for the Farseer. So now the ending DPS is lower on, on the Stormbringer builder because we don't have Ascendance, right? We never had Ascendance. Yeah, what I will say, though, is, again, <clears throat> the Augvoker and then not having Ascendance, this this is going to look entirely different than it did the first time around. So just bear that in mind. It's okay. Tempest really does help our damage over time. As we get Tempest procs, it ends up really helping us out. Um, it really shores up our damage. But the damage is going to be lower because we spent our Ascendance on that huge pack before we got to the boss fight, okay? So just remember, and again, I, I was trying to line up things as perfectly as I could, but um, I did kind of mess that up a little bit there. Let's go to the um, uh, average DPS on packs. Like I said before, it's about 1.5 to 6 million instead of like 2 to 4.5 million for the Farseer build. So there's a, there's a, I would say there's a wider range, a wider variance here on what you can do damage-wise on AoE packs with the Storm build. But if the pack lasts long enough, you will get Tempest procs. And so your damage, I think, ultimately will go higher. You'll be on the higher end of the variance versus the lower one as the fight goes on because you're getting Tempest procs, right? That's just how that works, okay? Second, deep, second boss here. Our peak was 1.9 million DPS, okay? That's really good. That's the exact same as the Farseer build. They both peaked at 1.9 million, which is interesting to me that they peaked the exact same way. So the PI is kind of making up for the Augvoker, I guess, in this particular case. But um, again, hard to quantify uh, which one's better there. This is the more important stat, in my opinion. On the Farseer build, we finished this fight at 1, 1 million damage overall. 1.03, okay? 1 million damage per second at the end of this fight. At the end of this fight on the Stormbringer build, it was 1.17 million. So a again, as the fight goes on longer, we get more Tempest procs and it ends up equaling just more damage, right? At the very end of this fight, we're at 1.17 million, 1.2 million basically by the end of this fight. I think it drops off, but it's basically 1.2 if they weren't dashing around. So much higher damage at the end of this fight versus the Farseer build, which is interesting, okay? Now, let's look at another big AoE pack. This pack, this is not as big of a pull, I don't think, because I think that in the first dungeon, we pulled over into this pack, so it's a little bit bigger. So, and again, the Pally's, like, backing up. He's getting out of my Earthquakes. I don't know why he's doing that, but it's completely ruining my damage, to be honest. It's actually dropping a lot of my damage. Look at all the Earthquakes over there, so... Again, variance. I can't control what the tank is doing. I, I mean, I just can't do that. So the damage here, the peak damage on this AoE pack was 4.2 million. On the Farseer build, it ended up being um, 6.4 million. But again, just like keep in mind what's going on. The Pally was like backpedaling out on my Earthquakes. It's a little bit different. So would the numbers be closer? I think they would be a lot closer. I think I could have done at least 5 million DPS here. Um, with my Ascendance proc if the tank would just stand still. But the tank did not stand still, and so we kind of got ruined. Now, the consistent damage afterwards, we were getting a bunch of damage here as he was, like, chain-pulling. And that ends up equaling, like, we're staying up around 4 million almost for this entire time, which is very, very cool. In the elongated fight here, I think the damage ends up being actually more than what we were doing um, in the on the Farseer uh, pack there, okay? Just... Again, keep it all in mind. I'm doing the best I can, but it's all it all ends up being uh, this big variance here. Let's go to the third boss, the Coagulation Man. Let's go to him. 
<clears throat> we're going to fight him, and we'll see what the numbers are on him, and then we'll go to the final boss. So the peak damage for Coagulation Man ends up being 2 million damage per second. That is with Bloodlust and Ascendance, okay? We end up doing 2 million damage per second on the peak. For the Farseer build, um, we only ended up doing 1.57 million peak DPS with Ascendance, with Bloodlust. Same, same setup there. So... We did much less peak DPS on the Farseer build here than we do on the Stormbringer build. Again, I'm going to say, I'm going to chalk that up to just getting Tempest procs versus the Farseer build just doesn't have that, right? Um, the final DPS on the Coagulation Man uh, for the Stormbringer build was 1.1 million. And for the Farseer build, it was 1.2 million. So like... The Storm build has a much higher peak, but on this fight, over the long haul, the Farseer build did better. So, like, it didn't do better by that much, but it did do better. Um, I don't know. I don't know what to say. I'm just giving you the numbers. It's a little bit weird, okay? We end up going down uh, quite a bit further on the Stormbringer build than we did on the Farseer build. Let's get to the final boss fight here. The final boss fight for the Farseer build, once again, remember... The final boss, we peaked at 1.94 million, okay? The final boss, we peaked really hard as far as here. For the storm build, we're only peaking at 1.58 million, okay? And we're going to peak with Ascendance here. We've already uh, probably got there, actually. Yeah, we get Ascendance right here. Boom, there we go. And then we're going to get our Ellie out. And we're going to start pumping with him. And we're inside Ascendance. We're going to get 1.5 million. When you, get a, when you get Tempest procs, it's just absolutely disgusting. So... There's 1.5, 1.58. There we go. There's the peak right there for Storm. The peak for Farseer was 1.94. The peak for Storm here was 1.58. So that's a 400k difference. Is that just the Ogvoker difference? I don't think so. Because again, we're getting PI here. And on top of that, um, uh, I, I just think we got better procs for, how, how, for whatever reason. We probably got more Aftershock procs. There's a lot of things going on there, right? The final damage for Storm was 1.1 million DPS on the final boss. And the problem for the Storm one is that our healer dies and then somebody else dies and I have to res the healer. So it ends up being a huge problem. Um, this is why our damage goes down here. So this is kind of a bad, I don't really want to count this, but it is what it is. Um, it's unfortunate. I have to go res this guy manually with my extra item res that I've got. And it actually ends up saving the pull because he gets up and then I'm about to die here because of splice and because of the tremor slam. And he puts wings on me, which keeps me alive and then allows me to live so we can kill the boss fight. So it's just, it is what it is. That one, that gets really, really messy there. Okay. The overall damage for the storm build on a plus 10 city is 1.43 million. Okay. 1.43 million. The... Farseer build was 1.65 million. So that's a big difference. Is that just the Ogvoker? I, I don't really know. We're talking about a 200k DPS difference. 200k. All right. Is that all Ogvoker? I, I don't know. We're getting PI with this new group. I was getting PI like the entire time, basically. We're, there's a lot of things going on here. There's variance in terms of Tempest procs and Awakened Storm procs. You know, am I getting a lot of those? I don't know. There's variance in Aftershock procs. Am I getting a lot of Aftershock procs or not, right? There's variance in uptime. Do I have maximum uptime, you know, depending on each one? Take it all with a grain of salt, okay? Take it all with a grain of salt, please. The actual damage contribution from Stormbringer versus Farseer, I would say the Farseer, like the... Ancestors did 14.4% of my damage. The Tempest and Tempest Overload here did 14.5% of my damage. And then the Awakened Storms proc adds another 2.1. So it's actually 16% of my damage. So the, the Stormbringer Tempest stuff did contribute a little bit more to my damage. But there's a lot of other things going on in those hero trees. It's hard to really quantify exactly how good each of, one, each of them is. But there's the difference right there. I just want to say a few little notes here. At the end of the day, I would say unequivocally that the Stormbringer build is more reliant on Tempest procs and Aftershock procs, in my opinion. 
Because if you get Aftershock procs, you're using Spenders more often. That gets you closer to your next Tempest. If you get Awakened Storm procs, that gets you towards your next Tempest. So it's very reliant on a bit of RNG there to make it work. Whereas the Farseer build is just consistent. You can run an RNG Farseer build where you're like relying on getting procs of your um, ancestors from Routine Communication and then Ancient Fellowship. I was playing the more consistent build where you've got guaranteed ancestors for 10 seconds because of heed my call instead of six seconds and their spells are more powerful so i just i just went for more consistency so in my opinion i think the farseer build is more fun to play i think it feels better to play because you have that 30 second damage window every 30 seconds you've got primordial wave and ancestral swiftness that come up and it feels very very good to have those buttons every 30 seconds but there's some variance with the Tempest build where it's like you can get these really, really, really high highs, but you can have some low lows as well. So that's that's it. The last thing I want to say is that the Farseer build has some secret tech here with the cooldown reduction on the Storm Elemental. That's really, really cool, actually. Getting a lot of cooldown reduction on Storm Elemental, I think, feels kind of good. So there you have it. Which one's actually better? I I'm really not sure. I think the Farseer build feels better to play. The Farseer build did more damage overall than the Stormbringer one did. So, but again, it had an Ogvoker. The other one didn't. Take it all with a grain of salt. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. I'd love to hear from all of you down there. I know this was a longer video. I just wanted to really break down pull for pull the differences and help you guys to see what the differences actually are between these two different trees. So... It's up to you. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. I would love to hear from you down there. Thank you so much again for watching. Love you all. I'll see you in the next one.